Hi, good morning. I think I'm going to call this the creation room. This is where uh, one of my kids does amazing artwork. You know, uh, I woke up this morning and the Lord was um, showing me a post that someone, one of my friend's friends had made about the church and how the Lord is the one building her. And that is absolutely the truth. And I began to just pray about it, and it's it's stuck in me. And I began to pray about it and meditate on it and talk with the Lord about it and listen. And he took me to uh, 1 John chapter 3 about love. And he showed me at the same time the story of Mary Magdalene and took me to the chosen. And, uh, wow, this word is even coming now. Um if you get a chance today, though, on a side note, sit down with 1 John chapter 3 and just read through it and ask the Lord just to reveal some things. So what he was showing me this morning is who he is. And he said this about himself. I, I am and I was. I am and I am to come. In other words, he was, he is, and he is to come. And in the post that my friend's friend had made about the church is how, uh, well, part of it is how God is making the bride. He's forming her, forming his church, forming each one of us into his image and likeness and into the church we're supposed to be and into the bride we're becoming without spot and without wrinkle. And that takes time because uh, he has to find us, save us deliver us, set us free from things that keep us in bondage. And he has to heal us from the inside out. And it takes, it's a journey. And we're on this journey together. And, you know, we're not who we were. You know, he was showing me the story of uh, Mary Magdalene and the story in The Chosen about how he saw and it was through one of Pastor Furtick, Steve Furtick's at Elevation, one of his shorts too. The Lord just brought all this together this morning. And you know, sometimes, and I'm one of those people, we can get stuck in our past. You know, we don't have to live there, but sometimes the memories of things that we did, said, didn't do, didn't say, uh, things that happened to us, things that were done to us, uh, it's just a part of the past. And sometimes those cuts uh, sometimes the shame and the guilt, and even though we know that we've been washed in the blood, sometimes our minds, it's us, it's our flesh, it's just hard to let go of those things. Sometimes we can be totally, have totally forgotten a lot of things and then we'll meet someone or, or be in a circumstance and those memories come flooding back again and sometimes it just latches right back on. And it's just hard for us to let those things go. And even though we don't live in the past, we each have a past. And to varying degrees, um, Jesus comes. He uh, Not that he comes in varying degrees, but in varying degrees, we have a past. Some of us have a really hard past, and some of us have a past that's not so bad. But all of us have a past that has sin in it that we have to be forgiven for and wounds that we've gotten that have to be healed in places we need deliverance, as I said. And when Jesus comes, he rescues us from all of that. He saves us. He washes us in his blood. And really, he said at the end of his life on this earth, it is finished. And really, the story is finished. In the natural, we are already complete. Uh, he lives outside of time, so everything is really already finished. Uh, but we are walking it out in the natural. And we are going to catch up with that one of these days. But sometimes it's just hard to escape our what was. And now we live in the present and we are, and we are becoming because he is making us into his image and likeness. And he is giving us the desires that are in his heart. He places them in our hearts and he perfects that which concerns us. And he performs all things for us. He, we are his masterpiece. We are his workmanship and he works in us to will and to do his good pleasure and to do the works that he called us to walk in. And we're in this, uh, sometimes I call it the ugly in-between. We're not in the past, really, even though we've been delivered and we're still getting healed from that. We're not there anymore. We're here right now in the here and now. 
and we're in that in-between place where we're not what we're going to be and we're not what we were, but it's who we are. And sometimes I wrestle with that too, you know, because everything in me wants to love and be just like Jesus. And I know I'm not, especially as I read first John chapter three today, you know, I was looking at it and looking at God's word is like looking in a mirror to see our reflection. And sometimes we see quite a distance between who Jesus is, how he wants us to be as people, and where we're at. And there's no condemnation in it. We are his workmanship. But I find, uh, okay, he says, let's finish this train of thought here first. Um, so we are right where we're at. And then looking ahead, we are becoming everything that he wants us to be. And when we're finished, we'll be just like him. We were, we are, and we are yet to come, just like him. Uh, so, I'm just waiting on the Lord for a second here. It's hard for us sometimes when it comes to the word of God, when we look in it, we see, even in the Old Testament, and ourselves again, who we were. And sometimes there's a struggle because God's word actually shows us the same thing that he's saying to us this morning. He shows us who we were. He tells us who we are and what we need to do. You know, we need to love one another fervently. We need to walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. We need to, if we see those that need to help them, we need to be patient. We need to be kind. All the things that we are admonished to do, he says, do all you know to do and stand. So we, we do those things as best that we're able, but we're not complete yet in him. You know, so we have to, we have to walk toward all those things, but we're not perfect in them. And someday when he's finished with us, we will be perfect in that. Another thing, and I guess he's showing me to say it this way. If you get a prophetic word, let's say today you're wherever you're at and the Lord sends someone to speak over your life, his word, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach breath of God, and it lines up with the word, the logos. And it's not something for today it's a promise for tomorrow or the lord gives you a vision an image something about tomorrow um maybe you're struggling with loving god for some reason or loving yourself or loving someone else and let's say he sends someone into your life today right where you're at and he he talks about loving you he talks about a divine romance with you. He talks about pouring his spirit out on you. And, and he gives you this, you get this beautiful imagery. And, and after the word is over and you're thinking about it, you're going, wow, I'm just not right there. I'm not there. Is that even possible for me? Well, see, the word of God and the prophetic word as well comes most often not for today. It comes as a promise and a picture of a, of, a, of the future, of a special future, something that the Lord wants you to walk toward. He wants us to walk toward that because that's something that he is going to bring about in time. And at the same time, we're called to live in him as he's taught us, as the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the word of God has been revealed to us. We walk as, as best we can with him in the spirit, by his spirit. So there's no condemnation from today because we're not already at tomorrow. Sometimes I struggle with this myself because I, I hate sin. I hate it when I see it in myself. And I've said many times, I wish I could just peel it off from the inside out, peel it off my life. I don't like it. And I know that I'm not who I was. I mean, oh my gosh, when I look at my past and see the person that I was and who he's made me to be today, I'm just like in awe because I know it's his work. There's no way that I could do anything to change what's been and to be this person that he's made me now. And yet I still look ahead 
because I know when I look in the word and when I'm with him, I'm not like him yet, but I have to be patient in that work and know that he's the one, he's the potter and I'm the clay, but I can stand in what I know to do today and see what he's saying to me about tomorrow and walk toward that picture. That's the was and is and is to come for us. You know, he loves us so much. And, uh, okay, when he was taking me to uh, the story of Mary Magdalene um, and the woman at the well, you know, they were so stuck in who they were. It wasn't who they were. It wasn't their identity. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it, I still struggle with if I relapse in one area. In a sense, what I'm saying is if I find myself repeating a sin that I don't want to do or because circumstances have brought it out and, and it's just brought me to realize, wow, I'm still dealing with this. And, you know, Sometimes we can think we're never going to, we're never going to get away from it. It's never going to change, but it is. He's doing it little by little. Change is, is, is not overnight most often. Yes, sometimes God will come and he'll do a miracle and deliver us from, from something. Like some people have said, wow, you know, I, I did drugs for so many years and I was touched by Jesus. I, I went to the altar. He saved me, delivered me. All that's possible. Healings are possible just like that. Anything God wants to do in our lives is possible. But most often I find that everything is a journey. You know, we're on this journey and it's line upon line and here a little, there a little, the change comes softly, quietly through life circumstances, sometimes radically, but over time. And we have to be patient with God and with ourselves in the process. But sometimes, like I said, we just get stuck and think this is who I am. It's not who you are. Don't, don't say that and don't think that when you're stuck, it's your identity. It isn't. Your identity is Jesus. When you belong with him, to him, you're going to look just like him. So it's not your identity. It's something you still need deliverance from. It's something that he's working on you and it's a process. And if you give up and you turn away, you'll short circuit that process. You see, God never walks away from us. He never turns away from us. He never, ever gives up on us. I think it's, um, hmm. I'm trying to think of the name. I think the king will come, but they sing the song yet. I play that song so much, you know, because I understand that I can't give up on myself because God is never going to give up on me. And if I give up on myself, throw up my hands and walk away from God and walk away from the process, thinking that, you know, he's just another person saying something that's never going to happen. That's not who he is. He will. He says in his word, he's bringing this right now. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. And I have to remember that in my own life. He'll be faithful. He is faithful. Just don't walk away. You can't. Paul said something in the Lord is bringing this now about looking in a mirror and seeing. We can see Jesus in that mirror. And when we look in and we see our reflection, we can see that we're not the same person. But if we're not careful and if we're impatient, we can walk away from that mirror. We can walk away from the word, the living word, the logos word. We can walk away from that mirror and forget what we've seen. And we can go back into the world. We don't want to do that. The Lord says, is saying this, this, this seems to be coming. I don't know for who, but I have this. The Lord is bringing this word that if you put your hand to the plow and you turn back, his soul has no pleasure in you. He tells us to count the cost before we start the journey. And yes, I know sometimes we don't even know really what that cost is until we're in it. But it's worth it. And if you've come so far already, why turn back now? It doesn't make any sense. There's nothing to go back to. You will never find anyone or anything beside Jesus that can be I am to you, that can transform you and make you into his image and likeness, give you his character, 
You'll have the joy. Everything God says, he's saying right now, all my promises are yes and amen. Don't give up on yourself. And that's a plea from the Lord. Don't give up on him and don't give up on yourself. You'd be foolish to give up on him because he will do what he said. But don't give up. Don't turn back. There's nothing back there for you. You weren't made for that. You were made for him. And you were made for the kingdom and to spend eternity letting him love you and loving him and being with him. I know it's tempting. There are days, and I'm going to tell you honestly and carefully, that I feel like giving up myself. I mean, I've been at this for quite a few years now. <laughs> and there are days when I get frustrated. Some days when I take the book and throw it across the room and say, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. But I don't really feel that way. It's just a moment of frustration. And when it passes, I know I have nothing to go back to. And he's saying this right now, even what Peter said, Lord, where will we go? There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. You know that deep down. I want to pray for you right now. Not me. The Holy Spirit is just leading me in this. So let's just pray. Lord, I pray for myself. I pray for all those hearing today that are really struggling in this walk. Lord, just comfort them right now, wherever they're at. Just let your presence fall on them wherever they're at right now and just bring a peace I just sense such a raging storm going on in them right now and they feel pulled to go back to an old life that they were familiar with and felt comfortable with, but really, you didn't. It's like the Israelites, you know, they, they were delivered and they couldn't wait to get away from the bondage and the slavery and the hard labor and the harshness and the scarcity. They were abused. It always looks better. To go back to something when you're in a wilderness and you're not sure where you're at or even where you're going yet. Where the Lord is taking you. But rest assured, you will get there. And there is a promised land and there is a better life. You just have to hold on. You just have to hold on. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. You're headed toward home. Just keep walking. Lord, right now I pray not just for a revival of our spirits, a revival, the breath of God, just breathe on us right now and raise us back up. Give us, let that resurrection life of Jesus just course through our veins, his blood, and just raise us right up from this wilderness, from this grave that we are finding ourselves being buried in by the enemy, by the lies by the words of others that are not speaking from you. They're lying spirits. Sometimes even through the people that may mean well. Lord, just touch us right now. Give us comfort, your comfort, your peace that surpasses all understanding. Speak to the storms in each of our lives and still them and quiet them. And right now we just command them to be silenced in the name of Jesus. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, just begin to speak words, your word. Bring your word to us today that we need to hear from you. Surround us with it wherever we go. Build us up in you. Give us courage, renewed strength, perseverance, and endurance. Help us to grab hold of the handles of this plow and just keep going because we're not in it alone. You're with us and we're almost there. It's not far. It's farther to go back than it is to keep going. Restore us today, God. Love us so good. Bring that love revolution into each of our lives from the inside out. Love us so good today. Soak us in your love today. Soak us in your presence, in your word, in your spirit. Help us to take time to be intentional today, to spend time with you 
in the quiet, somewhere far away from our phones, far away from everyone and everything to just shut down and be with you today, when we can, where we can. And just help us to listen. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see. Quiet us in the stillness so that we can hear your voice. Give us courage. You know what we need, each one of us, Lord. I thank you. We thank you that you'll meet us where we're at today. You're our shepherd, and when we wander off too far, you come find us and bring us back. And sometimes you just pick us up and you carry us home. So do that today, Lord, because I just sense such a desperation, a weakness, and a tiredness, a fatigue that goes way beyond physical exhaustion, emotional exhaustion, spiritual exhaustion. We're just weary, weary travelers. So Lord, touch us today and renew our strength. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I usually do this downstairs today. Okay. And the Lord had me come up into this art room, creation room, I said at the beginning, because you are his creation. And creation, well, you know, sometimes, like art rooms, life, I call it creative chaos. It's like the Holy Spirit, just like in creation, is hovering over our lives. And sometimes it's chaotic. Things always get messier before they get better. Hang on, friend. Because the Lord is hovering over your life. And he's speaking. He's singing over you, like he said in Zephaniah. He knows your heart. Don't give up. When I walked in here, I heard this song. Listen to it today. It was in my spirit. It's called, You Make Beautiful Things Out of Dust. You make beautiful things out of us. The Lord says he makes everything beautiful in his time. I think the song, I think he's telling me it's uh, by Gungor. G-U-N-G-O-R. You Make Beautiful Things. Look that up today and play. It'll, it'll give you hope. And it's a touch from the Father's heart to yours and from mine to yours. And it's touching me today, too. So anyway, remember, you're not who you were. And you may be where you're at right now. But you're not finished. And you're walking toward everything the Lord has for you. And that promised version of yourself. And remember, every time the Lord finishes something, again, he says, it's good. It's very good. You're loved. And this came really as a personal word for you today. So take it and hold it close to your heart because the Lord loves you more than you know. Have a great day.